What does it take to build a successful, authentic business? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to talk about what I consider to be the requirements as well as the success factors that you can keep developing to improve your authentic business. So first of all, what is an authentic business? I consider it to be a business where you are getting money for doing the kind of work that you feel passionate in doing that you really feel like you're really helping the world and you feel like, um, you know, you, you're not, you're not compromising your higher values. So it's sort of the, the service or product itself is meaningful for you. And the way you market and deliver it is also, um, something you can be proud of. So that's an authentic business. So that's a pretty broad definition. It could be many different kinds of product and services. Um, now what are the requirements? Do you need a business loan? Do you need a license? Do you need a degree? Do you need personally, if you are doing the kind of business that I'm doing, meaning you are coaching, consulting, mentoring, healing, there are many types of authentic business, but that's the type obviously that uh, I know best because that's most of my clients are a, a coach or a consultant or a mentor or an author or healer or speaker or facilitator of some kind. So the kind of, the kind of business where it's really about your own expertise and experience and um, process that you facilitate people through. If you're doing that kind of business, my opinion is you don't need a business loan. You don't need a license of any kind because unless you are a healer, like a medical doctor or some kind of in the field where you, you need a license to legally practice, but if you're not in the field where you need legally need a license to practice, then you don't need a license. You don't need certifications. I'm pausing there because a lot of you think you do. Um, you don't need anything except for a couple of things. Okay. So let's talk about that. One is an authentic business in my opinion requires financial stability first. Now you might say, well, George, I'm trying to build a business to be able to pay my bills. That's why I'm building a business. Well, the more you require of your business financially to pay your bills, to pay the rent, to get food, the more desperate you become to get the next client, to get you know, the next customer, right? And desperation is the opposite of authenticity. Very simple. So the more stability you have in your financial situation, or the, the less desperate you are, the more authentic you can be. Because if you don't need, okay, if you don't need customers, right, you can share what you truly believe. You don't, you're not always trying to get people to do anything. The, the, the energy of getting people to do anything, even if it's marketing, and of course I have to check myself all the time too. This is a whole other topic I could talk about. Persuasion is very problematic. If, if I'm trying to get you to do anything, I'm not authentically being of service and uh, authentically expressing myself. That's bottom line. So essentially, most of the marketing and selling you're learning is desperation. It's, that's what it is. It's desperation. It's attachment. None of these things are good for your spiritual growth, <laughs> okay, and for your integrity and for your higher values. None of them. So the place where you're like, I don't need anybody in terms of business, okay? I don't need anybody. And that's probably true in relationships too. The more you need someone, the more needy you are, right? And the more needy you are, the, the more you compromise your higher values and you can't really express yourself and all that stuff. Same thing in business. The more you need clients, the less authentic you can be. So please, please first get yourself into a stable financial situation. So I have a couple ideas. Some of you are actually part way there with your business. Like you, you just need three more clients. You know, to be financially stable, well, uh, when I share the blog post related to this video later, um, it, it'll be in the notes of the video, uh, I've linked to a couple of my blog posts, or at least one of my blog posts that gives you some guidance on how do you get clients as soon as possible, get clients ASAP, but it's not really meant to like go from zero to, you know, 20 clients in, in those, because that's, again, a lot of desperation, a lot of cajoling and pressure on yourself and pressure on others. 
which is what makes people turn away from you and not not become your loyal advocates right so if you only need a few clients there's an article I'll, I'll link to that'll help you to do that it's basically just to give you a shortcut it's contacting everybody you know it's contacting everybody you know uh, about your services and it's embarrassing but you got to do it and you could do it from hopefully more of a service oriented angle from from more of a you know um, lighthearted you know contact rather than a, please please become my client otherwise I can't pay the rent you know <laughs> Uh, that can't be that can't be authentic at all. So, um, uh, some other thoughts about getting financial stability: go drive an Uber or Lyft. People do that, and it's you know relatively simple these days to do it. Go drive an Uber or Lyft. You know, as many hours as you need a week, and during while you're driving, you can be thinking about your business, right? You don't have to listen to the radio. You can think about your business. You know, and. Uh, That'll give you some ideas, content ideas, ideas for strategy, all that good stuff. So driving, driving, driving Uber or Lyft, great idea. You know, every, everyone who can drive and don't mind driving can do it. Uh, or there are other services. Uh, I, I'm actually at a loss because I haven't looked into freelancer services in a while. But these days, there's so many you could deliver for Amazon. You could you could do all kinds of freelance stuff from your, from your home or whatever you already have. Deliver things for people, all kinds of stuff. Freelancer services, okay. Um, or get a get a pot, you know, maybe maybe you have a friend or a colleague who whose company is growing and you can get a part-time job with them or go work, you know, at a Starbucks or I don't know. That's probably too hard, too hard, right? <laughs> Gotta stand all day. It's, it's hard work working in a restaurant or a cafe or whatever. It's hard hard work. But there's lots of things. Find you, you can be creative, you know, do a brainstorm of here are 25 potential money making ideas that I can do right now without having to try to get clients. That I can do in my community, you know, uh, and and come up with that. Okay, and if you have any ideas, please comment below. Okay, so or maybe you're lucky to have a, a partner, spouse, family member who can support you financially while you're building your business. Um, I was in that situation when I started my business in 2009. My wife basically supported me 2008 partly to the, 2008 partly and partly 2009 until I got going where I was able to. To you know, pay my part of the bills, you know, p pitch in again. So maybe you have uh, somebody that you can lean on, a family member uh, that can help you with that. Or, or maybe you have savings that you know. I, I hesitate about tapping into savings, uh, especially retirement savings. It's really important not to just think, "Oh God, I've got all this money saved for my retirement. I might as well use it to build my business." Not a good idea, people. Not a good idea, honestly. Because you don't know how long it'll take to build your business. And if you have all this money saved up for retirement, it is so tempting to go, well, I have all this money saved up, and all these marketing gurus are telling me to invest in my business. So I'm going to invest $10,000. You know, maybe I have $300,000 saved up for decades of working you know, in corporate America or five hundred. dollars I don't know how much money I have saved up working in you know, cor corporations. All this money, oh, out of my $100,000, $300,000, I'll just invest $10,000. Bad idea. If you have ten thousand to invest, talk to me because I I don't I'm not going to get you to invest in programs and things, right? It's a bad idea. Don't invest. I mean, I might get, ask you to invest a couple hundred dollars in Facebook ads, trying it out, you know, because that's the best investment. Not in training programs. Please don't do that stuff. Okay, bad idea. Some of you already have done so, and I'm sorry I, I didn't get to you sooner. Um, okay, so that's the first requirement of of an authentic business is. Be financially stable first so you can make decisions from your heart and from your soul, not from your desperation and not from looking at your bills. Got to, got to kind of cajole the client and make them, persuade them to work with you. Because anytime you're doing that, you're going to be getting bad clients. I promise you. The clients are not going to be the right fit for you. Chances are. And you are going to feel like a failure because this is another thing I'll talk about at some point. But... Great clients make a great business. Honestly, you are the you. You're going to be the same person working with different types of people, but you will notice that certain people. No matter if you're the same person with three different people, three different clients, you're the same person. You provide the same thing, but one of them will get amazing results with you and will praise you, like and refer you, and then one of them will be like, "This was useless. It didn't work at all." You know, 
You were the same person. You provided the same service. And then the third person would be like, oh, it's okay. It was, it was fine. You know, I'm not going to refer you or anything, but it was okay. It wasn't bad. So it, it's not you. It's your energy and therefore your confidence and integrity, which brings you the best clients without you having to recruit, without you not re recruiting is fine, but without you having to desperately ask and sell. Okay. So requirement number one, financial stability, or at least at some basic sense requirement number two, and I have, I have a note here. I gotta, I gotta, uh, I'm, I'm going to be sharing a blog post about this. So I'm going to look at my notes. Requirement number two is, ah, self-care and spiritual practices. Why? Because most business owners work too, too damn hard. <laughs> Honestly, most business owners are very bad about self-care. And if you're bad about self-care, what happens is you get physically run down or you get emotionally resentful or you get, you just get negative. You're not positive. You can only build an authentic business if you maintain a state of joyful productivity, which means enough self-care, enough spiritual practices that allow you to approach every day and every task, ideally, ideally every task with joy, not resentment, not, oh, I got to get this thing done. Anytime you think, oh, I got to get this thing done, you are already in the gray zone. You're like between joyful productivity and resent resent resentful work you know so that i got to get things done is a dangerous place to be no you got to be like everything you do no matter administrative bookkeeping whatever you have to do in your business should be done with joy it can be done with joy why not who says you have to struggle through anything nobody except maybe you were raised with adults struggling through their work and you thought that was how you but it's because nobody very few people understand joyful productivity but you do hopefully you've been following my content for a while so you understand what that means and you, if you commit to it and do it, you can work beautifully every single day, no matter if you have zero clients, okay, you're working in the evenings and weekends because you have a full-time job or part-time job and, you know, take care of family and you're working, you know, in the spare hours on your business, you can work joyfully on your business, no matter if it's trying to figure out your message, trying to create content, trying to figure out technology, trying to figure out bookkeeping, anything it doesn't have to be frustrating, doesn't have to be suffering. Okay, it can be joyful, and that's because of your self care practices and your spiritual practices. So, that's requirement number two. Requirement number three is a plan and a strategy that you believe in. And that should go without saying. I mean, if you don't have an overall idea of how to build an authentic business, uh, you will be doing a lot of things that may not be helpful. Uh, sometimes, even you know, bring you know, delaying your, your success. Okay, so. Find a plan, a strategy you can believe in. Of course, I have so many blog posts on my website that you can read and put together your own plan and strategy that you, you are excited to, to do to build your authentic business. Okay, so that's requirement number three. Requirement number four is focused time to build your business. This, is, <laughs> this might sound obvious, but it's not. So many of you, okay, are spending time reading, watching videos, <laughs> okay, taking online courses, but you're not spending the focused time to do the uncomfortable work of building your business. Now, uncomfortable doesn't have to be suffering. I said before, I, I, I do uncomfortable things for my business all the time, but I do it joyfully because I look at it as play. I look at it as curiosity. I look at it as experimentation. And it's un uncomfortable only because, ooh, I don't know what's gonna happen. I could succeed, I could fail, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I succeed or fail. If I succeed, wonderful. If I fail, I'll probably learn more than I succeed. That's the truth because failure is a more – there's more motivation in failure to learn than, than there is in success. Success, you just kind of take things for granted. Failure, like, oh, my gosh, what could I have done differently? But you can, you can approach it all of it from a spiritual, joyful, zen-like perspective. It's all good because, well, financial stability hopefully will give you that sense of it's all going to be good no matter what. And hopefully spiritually, behind the financials, there's a far bigger foundation of it's all good, no matter if you're broke or rich or, you know, whatever the situation is, healthy or sick. Hopefully the, the, the spiritual foundation will provide you joy every single moment of every day for the rest of your life. You know, that's what, that's what spiritual practice is supposed to do. 
if you if you do it right, you know. So uh, that is really anyway. So focus time. That's what I'm talking about. I um, a lot of you know that I have been trying to build my side business for almost a year now. The one year anniversary is coming up, and I realized as I was putting this blog post together about the requirements of an authentic business that that's the one thing that I have not put in. I have not put in enough focus time. Uh, two hours a week, three hours a week, to, to, in my opinion, is not enough to build an authentic business. I mean, you really need more like, well, even me, someone who's so productive, I think I need more like four plus hours a week to build an authentic business. Otherwise, it's just a hobby. It's just a content creation hobby. It's not really going to build a business. So I'm, I'm on the verge of giving up on my side business because, and not, not because it's, a, it's, oh, no, you're giving up. No, it's because I just, I value my self-care too much. I mean, I, you know, like this, this business, this business that you're watching right now, this main business is already so full-time that I can't, you know, I, I just, I need the rest of the time to rest. And you know, do hobbies rather than oh, kind of building another business. And I know you all are hoping for for lessons from there, but I can give you the lessons from my side business just by working with my clients who are also building spiritual based businesses. And I can give you lessons from there, which I do all the time through my content anyway. Um, but I'm grateful to have experienced the side business and kind of experienced it for my own. Like, okay, I now I know what it's like to try to build a business from scratch. But I honestly, I'm I can't do it. I can't do it because I have, I'm too busy already and I don't have enough time. So if you don't have four plus hours a week, I'm super productive. I can do it in four plus hours a week. You might need an eight plus hours a week. I don't know how productive you are, but I would recommend please spend, if you can spend 10 hours a week to build your authentic business, even if you have a full-time job, okay, try to figure out how you can, how you can carve out five, 10 hours a week to build your authentic, to follow your plan, okay? And the plan might keep upgrading over time as you learn more, but 10 hours a week, I think is really kind of a bare minimum to build an authentic business. Um, two hours is not enough, not not at all. It's just a hobby. Um, four hours is like, if you're super productive like me, 10 hours I think is probably reasonable for most people, okay? All right, and then uh, the next requirement is patience for the results and the learnings. An authentic business, like I said, means that you are doing it without compromising your values so that you can do it in integrity and confidence and authenticity. And that means, and, and this is whether or not you compromise your values or not, here's the truth about how long it takes to get to, to make money. Here's the truth. You don't know. I don't know your marketing coach and business coach and smart marketing business consultant mentor does not know how long it will take you to be able to make a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars a month. Anyone who tells you they can, they can have a plan for you to do it in one year or six months or three months or even two years is not being truthful with you. They're using hype because how can they possibly know how long it will take you, okay? It's, it takes some people 10, 15 years. It's not to take some people, me, it only took me, what is it, I started in April of 2009. Well, I started really kind of flailing around in late 28, 2008, and I was basically self-sufficient by uh, the end of 2009. So it took me about a year and three months to become self-sufficient. Meaning, uh, by that point, I was making at least you know five thousand dollars a month. So it took me a year and three months, but I was doing it in a in a in a niche that's very competitive, but very clear in terms of it's very normal. People pay for for, for business and marketing trainings and things like that. very normal. But if you're selling self care, okay, services or programs, it's not normal. People pay for that. People don't think they could just they think I could read a book. They think I could just read some blog posts. They think I can watch some videos. They think I can talk to my friends. Maybe they'll see a therapist, but that's that's normal now, right? Therapy is normal. Coaching is not quite normal yet for people to pay for. So it takes more time. It just takes more time to build an audience who want to just hang out with you. you build a big enough audience of people who just want to hang out with you, then you can sell anything you want. You could sell anything you want. 
at that point. Any kind of service. Oh, I want to teach you how to, you know, untangle your phone cords. That's good. That's that's my service. You know, I'll charge you a hundred dollars just to untangle your. You spend an hour with me. We talk about life and untangle your phone. I mean, I'm being facetious, but that's really you need time. I don't know how long it'll take. Maybe it'll only take you three months. Maybe maybe you have some just very very lucky and take you three. But maybe it'll take you three to five years to start making three to five thousand dollars. I don't know. So the requirement is for you to be patient about it. Now, you don't have to be patient if you enjoy every day. You see, if you don't, you don't have to be patient if you have a financial stability, which is requirement number one, and if you enjoy every day that you work on your business. Then what's the point of patience? There's no need for patience. You are simply in joy. You are simply in authenticity. You're simply in self-expression, self-exploration, curiosity, service. There's no need for, for patience because you just love doing it no matter what it is. That is the point to get to. That's why the first two requirements, financial stability and self-care spiritual practices, well, it's just, you could just, I, I don't care if it takes 30 years. I'm enjoying myself, right, is hopefully what you're saying. Now, the irony, of course, is if you're enjoying yourself, right, and you have a plan you believe in that, that is a reasonable plan, you'll probably do it faster than most people. You'll probably get results faster than, more, than most people. So that's the irony of it. It's like not caring about the results, ironically, might get your results sooner because you're able to do things for more confidence, authenticity, joy, service. It's it's just brilliant because now you're actually caring for people and people notice that. People are like, oh my God, you're so, you're so different from most pr providers, service providers, right? Okay, so 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 those are the requirements, okay? The five requirements, um, financial stability, self-care spiritual practices, plan you can believe in and can keep upgrading, focus time that you actually spend at least 10 hours a week to build your business um, and patience or not even need patience, but joyful productivity. Those are the five requirements. Everyone needs those things. And now I'm going to rattle off a couple of helpful assets that if you came to the table with that, it's going to make, make things go faster for you. Or you, if you develop these things, it'll make things go faster for you. One is good work habits. So good work habits means that you should, when you show up to work, you're not like checking Facebook and you're not, you know, like just, it takes you 50 minutes to get into something. You can get into something after 15 minutes. And the biggest tip I have for you for good work habits is to use Focusmate. Focusmate.com. I use it multiple times a day. No matter if you're super productive already or if you're not productive at all, Focusmate will improve how focused you are in working. So I use it all the time several times a day, focusmate.com. Uh, good work habits is, is the first asset to develop or skill set develop. Second asset or skill set to develop is connections in your chosen field. So whatever field you want to develop a business in, the more connection you have in that field, colleagues that are collaborative, you, you'll, you'll meet lots of people. Some people will, will, you'll find to be quite collaborative and you can share notes with each other, share experiences like, oh, this is working for me. This is not working for me. They'll tell you what's working and not working. That's super helpful. That'll shorten your learning curve by a lot. Um, connections also means that you might meet people who have an audience that they can introduce you to uh, or, or present. You can present in front of them. So connections are, you know, net caring, networking is very, um, you know, that's that's really important. Uh, third asset or skill set to develop is tech savviness. The more tech savvy you are, the easier things are for you, especially when building a business that has online components. And you can learn it. No matter how tech unsavvy you are, you can. I have seen my own clients from being very untech savvy to being like better than most of their most of their peers in business. So, if you're willing to joyfully practice and be willing to go on a path of mastery for, for tech savviness, it can become like second nature for you. And that's all, how all of us do it. None of us are born with a computer. Now, of course, some people now are born very young. They're using a computer very quickly, but all of us can learn and all of us have to learn you know, these days. Um, let's see here. I'll just, uh, let's see, okay, a couple quick things. Knowledge and content. If you already come to your field with a lot of knowledge, you've already, you know, taken courses, you've read lots of books, you have your own experiences, you have lots to say, then things will go faster for you. But if you are like me, when I was building my side business, I guess I'm 
kind of giving up by this point. But when I'm building my when I was building my side business, I had still had to figure out what my content and my knowledge was because I was I really started my side business as a marketing experiment, not out of passion. It was more for like, well, can I help people like you? So it was. I mean, so so really, since the start, it was never really that authentic, my side business, because it was really meant to be a marketing experiment rather than, oh, I really want to do it because I want to do it, right? I'm, I'm busy enough. I don't need another thing to do, right? So I had to figure out what did I believe about mindfulness? What do I really believe about spiritual practices and things like that? And, and yes, I have some personal knowledge from that. But the more you have already studied and the more you have a framework already, the easier, the faster things go. Testimonials and endorsements. The more you've already worked with friends, you know, maybe you volunteered for friends for, for many years and they can endorse you for your services, for your skill sets. The more you come to the table with that or the more you can develop that now, the faster things go because, well, you have case studies, you have endorsements, you have testimonials that make your marketing easier. And then finally, um, money for paid ads. The more you can save money to be able to run Facebook ads, the more you can spend on it, the faster things will go for you for sure. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. <laughs> it's a long enough video. Um, if you have any other questions about what I said, please feel free to let me know below the video. And thanks for those who are joining me here live, Linda and Dan, Alex, uh, Cherie, Yul, uh, Captain, um, Paolo. Uh, thank you so much for joining me live. And I hope this is helpful. Uh, the most important thing is to look at the requirements again and see how you can how can you shore up those requirements for yourself so you can really build an authentic business that you can be proud of that you'll love that is sustainable for you and that has gives you the best chance of succeeding even financially and um, and then those assets that I said uh, those skill sets you know see you know put that down and like okay I'm gonna work on these things okay so I hope this helps, and until the next video, I wish you joyful productivity and um, and and fun, basically, in building and, and working on your business. Be well.